Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. Today, I get to meet someone. It, this is kind of an interesting episode in the sense that I get to meet someone I already know, but I'm talking to them in an art sense. Plus, they are living in England. They, I'm talking to them from over there. I, I've known this person and her husband for about 10 years because they're also podcasters. They were involved in the same sort of music community that I was doing when I used to do a music podcast called Music Manument. So I know them, their podcast is called The Bugcast, and you should check it out because it's lots of really interesting music from uh, the Creative Commons realm, which is also something that I do with my music. Uh, letting people download it and share it and distribute it and build upon it for free. So we know each other that way. I was contacted because the person has recently gotten into doing artwork, uh, learning how to become an illustrator, learning how to do graphic design. She wants to actually broaden her abilities and actually go into the realm of being able to offer like logo design or being able to just expand on the knowledge that she has of working with computer programs or uh, internet. I want to say internet web, but that's it. I actually have that background and I want to say internet web, but working on the internet and making websites and things like that, which is a brilliant thing to do. It is actually a very smart move to know how to actually program and also do design. So we talk a bit about that and also just, uh, she's recently done painting, er, digital painting and taking, takes lots of online courses and prompts. And it's just fun. She does it to unwind, but also to help build her career. So that is what we talk about today. And also, don't forget to go to my website, TomRay'sWebsite.com. If it's the first time you're listening to this podcast, you are going to be able to find my daily comic that I do there. That's about my life. And also, uh, different sort of things that I post about, which would be my life since I went into business for myself, selling uh, and reselling pop culture items from the 60s through the 90s. So you can go to TomRay'sWebsite.com and also find the podcast there. So... Anyway, here is my interview for this week's Tom Ray's Art Podcast, starting right now. I'm Caroline Lee. I'm a long-term podcaster. I'm also an artist. I am the co-host of the podcast, which has been going on for almost 13 years. I also take part in a show called Uncharted. I'm also an artist and I do all my stuff on the Instamoo or Instagram. And I'm also currently learning graphic design as well. So I've got a second Instagram account for that as well, which you is it. WDCD UK. <laughs> which I'll, so it's either we do creative design or what did Caroline do? I don't know which way around, but it was just like a different moniker. I've got the, the URL on that, so... It's something to build up. And I do want to ask you about the names that you've been using in the in the different uh, platforms that both you and your husband uh, yeah, yeah. work on. But uh, first of all, when did you actually, or actually, first of all, wh where are you located? So people know where I'm talking to you oh, from. Oh, yeah. So we're based in the UK. So we're in a place called South Yorkshire, a little place called Connor in South Yorkshire in England as part of the UK. But I was actually born in Scotland just to make things even more complicated. Were you? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. What, how did you end yeah. up? Well, what made you go to Yorkshire? Um, long story short, my biological parents were splitting up and I got raised by my second cousins, who I know was my mum and dad. So I was 13 months old. My mum and dad had split up. I was uh -huh. due to go into children's home. My grandmother's sister said, oh, that's not going to happen. Took her son and daughter up to Scotland, picked me up with a bag of clothes, and I lived with them ever since. Really? <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> That's a really potted history. Um, Are you Annie? A... No. <laughs> I think I was just lucky. Um, I've yeah, got a no kidding. And a sister that did get brought up in Scotland, and let's just say we've had very different lives so far. Okay. Well, how many people total are in are in your family? Is it just you and your sister, or are there more? Um, I've got a brother and a sister, so I was the youngest of the three. Okay. So when the two people were splitting up, my biological mother wanted to keep my sister which didn't work out and my brother was going to go with his grandmother 
and I was going to go in a children's home, which is what didn't happen. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, all these years, I still know my biological father. He came to my wedding. It was really hilarious, actually, because when we got married, I'm pretty sure my husband's family were convinced that they were a gay couple because they were both saying, I'm the father of the bride. No, I'm the father of the bride. Oh, <laughs> because they, <laughs> they thought they were together since they were both fathers. Okay. Yeah, I never really knew my biological mother. She had problems with drinking drugs. Okay. Um, and I found out a couple of years ago that she actually passed away, so I will never oh. know her. Okay. So, wow. but it's one of those things, it's it's sad, but then it's not sad because she's never really been part of the life. Right. So, so I've, I've sort of known you and your husband for several years, but I didn't know that backstory. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. So, and when I was a youngster, I used to always have fun by telling people that my mum and dad were brother and sister because they weren't my biological parents and they are brother <laughs> and sister. But they just knew that they... So basically, my grandmother's sister got legal custody of me, mm -hmm. but she was elderly, so it was her daughter that was the mother figure, and I always called her brother my dad, and it's always stuck, and it's stuck for many years, and they have, to all intents and purposes, being my mum and dad. Yeah. Um, and they used to always live together with their mum and dad and looking after them, because my granddad used to be a minor, and he used to have, like... Um, he had pit problems, so like breathing and emphysema and things like that. Right. So my mum was kind of the carer for him. Um, and literally, I have just been their child. So, And it's really weird because if I showed you a photo of them and me, you uh -huh. wouldn't question that they're my parents because we have a strong family resemblance. So my paternal grandmother is the spitting image of who I call my mum, <laughs> which would have been her niece. So there you go. <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's probably one of the best backstories I've heard about growing up so far on this show. I'm not, I love to think about it, but I'm pretty sure that that, that ranks right up there. That's fascinating. It's weird because if you tell people, they're all like, oh, I'm really sorry for you. But I'm actually, well, I'm not really sorry because all the things that have happened have happened for the right reason. So oh, I yeah. still know my brother and sister, but we don't have much in common. They used to come and visit once a year. Um, didn't always get on. It always used to start really well. My brother tried to drown me once because I could swim and he couldn't. <laughs> yep. Um, it's not really drowning you then if you can swim. I, he was just well, trying to see if you really were. he held my head under the water and the lifeguard had to jump in fully clothed to pull him off him oh, while my, my biological father sat upstairs reading his paper. Yeah. Um, and then he threw me, well, pushed me down the stairs once, but then my cousins, who were like six foot ten, got him back. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, I've had a really, but other than that, I've had a sedate upbringing, but it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Aside but from that enough, little sibling abuse story. <laughs> yeah. But funnily enough, though, where I live in Conisborough, there is a lot of Scottish people here because oh, really? a lot of people okay. from Scotland came down for the mines, for the pits. So I guess I was mining. unaware of the mines, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So coal mining used to be a huge industry. It got wiped out by Margaret Thatcher in the 70s, 80s. But a lot of people from Scotland came down here. So the house that my mum and dad live in to this day was an old pit house. So they were they were built for the miners. And then they became council houses or social um, housing. And then they bought them privately. So it was really weird, even though Conisborough is in the middle of South Yorkshire, it has got very strong links to Scotland. I'm trying to find a way to, to the, this, this conversation is so fascinating. And now I'm going to be like, so we're here to talk about art, huh? You know, like, how do I make, I'm trying to find a smooth transition and it's just not going to happen. So I figured I would just expose the whole thing, but that's fascinating. I, yeah. That's amazing. I love this it's story. It's one of those things somebody said I should always write my story, my life story. Cause it is strange when you speak it out to people, if that makes sense. Here's a transition. You just gave it to me. So one of the things I know you do is you've actually been writing. You're you're actually a writer. You've written some books before, right? Oh, well, I've 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 co-authored some books. I've done some NaNoWriMo books. Um, and writing is something I love to do, but I don't always have a chance to do it. But I've done some illustrations now for books as well. So I illustrated an anthology. Oh, I didn't know and that. Being, yeah. Um, I've done some book covers for people and I've got a friend who's done a children's book and basically she had some really old drawings and she's like, oh, can you redo these? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Okay. So I, I feel like there are a lot of people who want to make children's books and they're either on the writer side or on the drawing side. How yeah. did you connect with this person to actually make the children's book? Like what was the, how did that come about? So I've known her for years. So I used to be part of a writing group locally. And the bloke who runs it's really lovely, but he's very eccentric. And okay. 
I don't want to be rude, but often I feel like he's taught me a lot of things not to do for writing rather than what to do for writing. But his heart's in the right place. Yeah. Um, and one of the ladies there, Kate, she's always friendly. So we've been friends for years. I mean, she's like 40 years older than me, but we've kept in touch. So it's been really nice. Um, and every so often she'll be like, I've just written this short story. Could you do me some art for it? So, And I quite like doing it because it's something different and it's it's quite sweet. But she's really she's a really good writer and she's... She did a book called, I think it's called, it's not Annie, it's um, I'll have to, Lizzie. And it's a bit like a female Oliver Twist. Oh, really? But it is so well done. And I think because Kate is so endearing, she managed to get somebody who'd done some official artwork for Oliver to do her the cover art for her drawing. She'd seen it online, which was a, just a drawing. And I'm like, can I use that as my um, book cover? And then all of a sudden the person has done it in a book cover shape. So I think she's just got one of those personalities that she's she's not sneaky with it. So she kind of gets a yeah. lot of help from people. And there, there are different levels of children's books. So which kind is this? Like they're the kind where it's big pictures and like small sentences yeah. for children to read. And then there are ones where it's like a picture on one side and a page of text on the other side. So which, which kind was this? Her- I would say hers was aimed at maybe the six to eight or six to nine year okay. old and they're a series of short stories. They're very, a bit like Wind in the Willows in a way. It's all animals in a little place and play, and it's called, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, it's gone off my head. Um, but basically each story had a picture at the beginning and a couple of illustrations in between, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, I'll, try and, I'll try and remember the name. I've done the cover for it, so it's just one of those <laughs> things. But um, but then the um, Lizzie and Annie, they were more done as full, proper books, just with the illustration on the cover. Um, but the one she's doing at the moment is a series of short stories for young people. I think the first one that she did before, the one with the um, the anthology and whatnot, she got art, art, art council funding for that, so it was one of the things that she was given to do. Uh, but she's a really good writer. She's quite a character as well. Okay. And, and when you did the book for her, like, what kind of uh, process did it take? Like, how were you? Well, first of all, how did you do it? Were you doing it digitally or were you doing it on paper? I did it digitally. So I did the um, the ones for a, um, a children's book on digitally. I've done the art cover on Photoshop. Okay. Um, but nowadays, I would have done it in Illustrator. But back then, I didn't know Illustrator. So Illustrator to me is quite new. Okay. Um, and I've gone from being really scared of Illustrator to being like, oh, I quite like this. It's cool. Why were you afraid of it? Because I've done, when, when I draw on the iPad, I draw with an Apple Pencil. So it's yeah. just like drawing. Whereas Illustrator, because it's vector art, it's the pen tool and it doesn't work the same as just drawing. You have to then click places and then bend it and curve it and then do different shapes. So it's just a different mindset. And it was just a bit daunting at first. But I've been doing a graphic design course off of Udemy. Yeah. Um, and the lady who wrote it is really good. Um, and I've, she did like a little interactive worksheet and suddenly it was like, oh, that is actually quite easy. I don't know if I didn't try it before sort of thing. So I've gone from being daunted to really quite enjoying it. So she did a five-day challenge recently and each day was a different – so it was like a photo composite one day, um, do something with your favourite quote another day. But then when it was the vector illustration one, I recreated a full scene from Adventure Time <laughs> using fully the pen tool and a couple of shapes. Okay. And I am so proud of it because it was like, I didn't think I could have done it before, but I could do it. And yeah. since then I've done all sorts. Um, a friend of mine does a, a podcast and her logo, the only version she got was getting a bit dated and the file was not the best file. And she's thinking of putting it somewhere on it on like um, clothing and things. So it's like, can you just get rid of the outside it was just such a bad quality file so I've literally recreated it fully from scratch I've done it in Illustrator so it's mm-hmm. a almost a carbon copy only it's really high DPI huge file will will do really well but I've managed to and she, she can't tell the difference between her old logo and this one other than it looks crisper oh that's how closely I got it matched so I was quite chuffed with that <laughs> there's that is one of the benefits of like say Illustrator or a program like that is tracing is actually very very specific you, you're able to get in there and like you said you can actually take the line and move it around and, yes, and make it yeah, match yeah. up like just have the layer underneath and then do one on top and draw it and then get rid of the old layer yeah, yeah I've, I've yeah. done that with a couple of things it's funny too because 
with the separation you were talking about with Illustrator, over the years, it's starting to skew more into the, like, they're actual vector-based drawing apps now. Like, they're, Illustrator still is the way it is where you can, yeah, yeah. you know, structure it. But there are more uh, SVG, which would be the, you know, the vector-based uh, programs out there that actually you can use just as regular drawing ones. Like even um, I've been messing with Blender lately and Blender lets you draw in SVGs yeah. and things like that. And it's it's funny that it has it has taken so long for that to happen. And also the fact that SVGs are much more portable and usable and reusable and importable rather than raster ones where it's always an image and you can't you know, use it in other formats. You could actually take an SVG and import it into another SVG program and continue to manipulate it. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. so it's starting to meld together. But I get your disconnection when you first get it because it's it not just drawing. Just, <laughs> it is, but but once you get used to it, it, it is quite cool. So I, I've started now. I, I do daily prompts, and sometimes now I will do my daily art prompt in Vector Art just to see. Yeah. Just to go for the different process and okay. things like that. So I've ranged from doing like little collections of so like if the one of the prompts was a razor so mm -hmm. I literally did a sheet and I recreated loads of different types of razors yeah so they look almost like the real thing or I've done I think one of the prompts was um, seven which is quite loose so I did seven of nine from Star Trek <laughs> but I did it as <laughs> better just to see nice. if I could try and do it sort of thing um, and it's once you get your confidence up on it it's right quite cool because before you were like where do you start but now it's like well just put a an eclipse on there and then you'll just remold it and tweak mm -hmm. it and change it around and so it, it's just your confidence levels isn't it but my, my, my main one is procreate i've been using that for i just worked out about two and a half years okay um but just recently i've been doing some tutorials where even though i've used it for only two and a half years i'm now using it to a much higher level yeah and i'm, I'm like i've done a couple of tutorials like did that always happen? Has that tool always been there? Right. And now I'm, and I think because I do daily challenges, a lot of them have been quite little ones and they've been quite quick drawings or they've been quite cartoony. And now I'm going for some more realism and some more in depth stuff. So mm -hmm. it's really quite cool. But I'm quite enjoying the progression that I'm going through, which is good. Yeah. Well, and there's something to be said for uh, not going straight into the tutorials and just using a thing and getting used to the environment. Like it's not as overwhelming because then you look at it later and you're like, oh, that's over here. And you understand why it's over there. You under, you know, there are things sometimes yeah. you run into by yourself. Sometimes you, yeah, when someone shows you, like you're more familiar with the environment when people start going, yeah. here's how to do it. Yeah. If you have no idea and you start doing the tutorial, you don't know why you went there. You're just following yeah, the yeah. motions. And these tutorials, it's not how to use Procreate. It's say, here's a fantastic art piece. I'm going to do it, and you're going to follow along and recreate right. it yourself sort of thing, that sort of thing. So, um, And I've done a couple of intermediate and advanced ones, but what, what I've done after each individual one, I've then gone away and done it again off mm -hmm. my own bat without using the tutorials to see if I remember the techniques, mm -hmm. which is actually quite cool. So I did um, a macaw parrot, as a tutorial, oh, it's about yeah. two and a half hour, but nearly three hour pa um, tutorial, and it's almost lifelike. And then I thought, well, I'm going to try to do that again. So I went, I spoke to a person on Facebook. So I'm in a group which is um, free reference photos for artists. So it's photographers that are either amateur or or more. Okay. They'll share their artwork, their their photography, and then artists will say, oh, I'll recreate that, and they share the piece. And he'd done a macaw, which was a different colouring different angle so I said oh, I'm gonna have a go at this and I've done it and not only did it work out well he really likes it and both of the pictures I've done if I put it through Google Lens it recognizes it as a macaw <laughs> so I'm taking that as a good thing <laughs> I never thought of doing that that's actually yeah. a really interesting idea so you you take a picture of it and go ask Google basically what is this yes so if it's <laughs> like I did a I did a flamingo which was a bit more paintery yeah and it recognized it as a flamingo drawing, whereas the other ones, because I was trying to do more realism, it actually recognized it as the macaw parrot. Did you come up with this idea or did somebody suggest it? It was just an idea I had because... That's amazing. <laughs> just to check to see whether it, the realism was as real as I could make it sort of thing. <laughs> I love that idea so much. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say your background or like what what is your influence is it is it a realistic one or because you said you decided to try and do something realistic like is your background actually trying to 
do realistic well, painting or what I've, is it? I've always been into art. Mm -hmm. And when I've done the daily prompts, I think I've used the daily prompts really just to expand my skill set with the app. Um, and I've done mostly cartoony stuff. So, for instance, there was June Tune, which was basically recreating some of the favorite um, car cartoon characters. So one day it was like Lisa Simpson, another day it was Flintstones. Okay. And that was fun because it was trying to make it look like the actual character. Um, but over the last year or so, I've been trying all different types of art, and I don't think I've kind of worked out what my actual one is yet, but as well as doing the digital art, I've been doing acrylic paintings, I've been doing watercolor paintings. I used to be part of a physical art group, but because of COVID, right. it's now a Zoom art group that we meet every couple of weeks. Oh, you do still meet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, we do every good. two weeks, and we each two, every two weeks we'll decide on a theme, so... We did pencil sketching recently. We did watercolor portraits, which was weird because I've never tried to do watercolor. I've tried. Then, I still don't get it. I don't know. I can't. I want to. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then next week we're doing um, abstract acrylic. Oh wow! Which is my bag because that's the kind of thing I like to do. Okay. Um, so what happened about a year or so ago? Um, for something different for my birthday, Dave bought me an art night. So I don't know if you've heard of this, but art nights were basically you went to a pub mm. and there was a trained artist and you all got a blank canvas and you all sat there while you're drinking trying to recreate the, the art piece. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed that one. And then I did that four or five of us and then obviously COVID hit. But right. it just opened up that, you know, I don't just have to do digital stuff. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm I'm not I'm doing the daily prompt. But I'm not doing as many. But I'm doing these tutorials to then go that next level up. So to be able to work on some of the, the color depth and tone and things like that and make things a bit more realistic and popping and things like that. So, mm -hmm. well, mm. and first of all, I want to, I saw the picture of when you did go to that, um, that it, on your Facebook page, there was you with the class and mm -hmm. the canvas and everything. And you were at the pub, yeah, yeah. which it's so weird for me to say pub. I mean, I know that's uh, like, here we say bar. So when I say pub, I'm like, I feel like I'm trying to be pretentious, but it's like, no, that's what you called it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, my favorite part is I was looking at that and I was seeing you painting at it and I was like, Oh, we have those here. We used to have an actual bar that was specifically you, it was a painting and it was painting and a bar. You went there to yeah. do that. My favorite thing is clearly that wasn't what the place you went to was because in the background on the TV, big screen is WCW wrestling going on. And I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah. that, that, that's an, an art. <laughs> yeah. an art gallery. I think the second art night I went to um, well, the first one we were upstairs in our in own, in own room. That was brilliant. The second one we were actually in the pub. We mm -hmm. had a couple of tables and there were everybody around you. And as the night progressed, more and more people were getting a bit, oh, what's that? You know, they, they couldn't quite. <laughs> so it was quite interesting. Um, and then the one in Leeds, that was, it was a very small pub. And I think it was very ambitious to try and do an art class in such a small pub <laughs> that was quite so busy but it it was it was fun as well yeah no it looked like you guys were having a good time i just it, i caught the tv in the background and i'm like wrestling's yeah, yeah. on that's pretty funny um but the beauty of those nights though is everybody got the same tools everybody got the same blank canvas and everybody listened to the same instructions and everybody's art piece at the end was different yeah exactly because everybody interpreted things differently so we did the frida carlo one um, one person, her the eyebrows was a full on mono brow. Okay. And she did so many features that were really quite dark, but she really went for it. She'd kind of gone a bit too far, but it kind of worked because it was consistent across the piece. So even though it didn't look anything like the one we were doing, as a whole, it was brilliant because everything was consistent. Uh huh. If that makes sense. We did a grumpy cat one, and there was one woman there, <laughs> and I do think she may have had dementia because she her husband talked to the group and she was a little bit and she did something completely different but in a way even though it was nothing like grumpy cat it was actually quite a work of art on its own and, well, she and there are no herself, wrong so. answers either that's exactly. the thing it's not it's not a high school test where it's like there's an a b or c answer there's you know everything is a d answer fill in you know other yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what is your uh background i mean i know you're taking a lot of you are involved in a lot of groups and you've already mentioned like different prompts you follow different Facebook groups. Yeah, yeah. And so what, and you, you said you're learning 
different types of techniques from this. Yeah. What is your background before you started using all these groups or started getting involved in all these things? So if I go back to school, I was always interested in art, but mm -hmm. it's the old fashioned, your parents are a bit, oh no, you don't want to do art, you want to do something different. So I did art up to GCSE, which is your, um, you'd have them as high school exams, so before college. Um, so I did art then, and then after that it's just been a hobby, which, you know, I've still got drawings from when I was 10, and I'm, I'm 41 now, so that's right. how long ago it is, but... Um, so when I went to college, it was very much business studies. Oh, okay. Businessy stuff. Nothing wrong with um, that. But then in my second year, one of the tutors was learning to become an IT tutor. Mm. So she needed some guinea pigs. So we were learning about DOS and Windows 3.1. That gives you an idea of how mm. oh, it was Windows 95 had just started to come as well. Right. Um, so then when I went to university, I did a degree in business information systems, which was about 20% business, 80% computing. Um, and then work's been more, it was IT initially, and now it's been more third sector, so community engagement. Um, I ran a program for social um social inclusion and social isolation so basically it was about whether you could use the internet and social media to combat social isolation so I had like a cohort of people and some were elderly and just wanted help about you know doing their online shopping and being able to keep in touch with family and this was before one... say zoom and video conferencing and all that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. yeah. okay yeah, um, and then one of them was, he was a, a substance addict who was an ex-offender who was also semi-dyslexic, and we used the tablet for him to be able to brush up on his his, um, his literacy skills and also had apps on there so that when he got letters or emails, the letter would read it out to him so that mm -hmm. he could understand things like that. And then for the last five years, I've worked for a social procurement cons uh, uh, organization. So basically, all our uh, members are social landlords. Mm -hmm. um, and I deal with the social value, which is about all the construction companies that are doing work for those social landlords take on apprentices. So it's kind of max matching, matching all the stuff that I did in the social side for third sector and the IT side and the people side. But all along that... I've made sure that the art side of things is my is my me time basically. Right. Um, it's how it's you're unwinding, is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I um I've always I've always enjoyed doodling and things like that, but it was two and a half years ago I got my iPad, um, and I've pretty much done daily prompts every day since. Yeah. How did you? Whose prompts do you use? Like, what people are you following that you that you mainly get things from? Right. So the main ones I'm doing at the moment, I'm in a group on Facebook called Corona Art. So basically, once a day, the chap who runs it, Adam, does a little video, and it's a it's a it's a word prompt. So today's was heart. So I actually mm -hmm. did a drawing of um, hands doing a heart sort okay. of thing. Um, I'm also in a weekly group called Prompt My Week, which again is a one-day prompt. I'm in a group called Global Weekly Art Challenge, which is a free word prompt. So each week they'll give free words, and sometimes they're connected, sometimes they're not. Um, but before that, I did loads of prompts from base, uh, from Instagram. So I've done Inktober a few years, but I've tried to always done those with proper ink rather than digital. Um, in October, there's loads of... Um, Halloween themed ones. Right, those are always um, fun. <laughs> then you've got your Christmassy ones at Christmas. Um, and then there's other ones you can get. So um, I also took part in a 365 day challenge a couple of years ago, which was basically a prompt a day for, for a mm -hmm. year. But although I kept up, the people running it kind of waned off, which was a bit of a The shame. people running it? <laughs> yeah. They were like, it's yeah. too hard to come up with the ideas. <laughs> I think they just they just got a bit of thing. But then th there's loads of themed ones. So there's things like Mermaid in, in, in May. There's um, June Tune and Tune June, which are the similar things, but slightly different slants on it. Yeah. You've got, um, there was 31 Days of Harry Potter. There was Random Hybrids, that sort of thing. But this year I've done less of the the 30 odd day challenge ones and done more of just the the corona and that but then on top of that I've I started because um with the with the pandemic over here some 
because we're a small company, quite a few of us have been furloughed on and off part of the year. Mm -hmm. Never lost any income, but it's just oh, about good. getting income into the work sort of thing. And the first lockdown, I was like, right, I can't just sit here and do nothing. So I thought, right, I'll, I'll sign up some courses. So I've been doing a graphic design course on Udemy. It's just something I've always been interested in. Okay. Um, and that literally is telling you all the foundations of Photoshop, Illustrator. It'll be in design after that. On the back of that, I've done a couple of logo challenges to put into practice what I've learned. So I've done daily logo challenge, which was 50 prompts for 50 days in a row, and then logo core, which is 30 prompts for a row. Yeah. Logo core was very prescriptive. It was a pretend client brief. So, hi, I'm such and such. I'm running such and such a company. I want this kind of logo. Okay. And daily logo challenge was a do a logo that features a panda, do a logo that features a hot air balloon. So it's different types of thinking. One's very open and one's quite specific. Some of the specific ones even said it can only have two colors or it must have blue or gold or it must feature X, Y, and Z. So it's just different ways of working to a more pres prescriptive brief versus a, a more open one. Um, I've just started following somebody called Art With Flow on Patreon, and that's why I'm doing some of these more in-depth um, tutorials and that was because somebody else had posted a tutorial they'd done and I thought oh I quite like that so it was literally <laughs> to create a realistic burger yeah um, so I did that one I've done loads since then but this weekend I've done a burger fries and ketchup pot I saw that my own bat just to try and yeah so the one that I posted on Instagram I've actually improved since because I, I didn't like some of the the blur and the color so I was gonna say you had multiple versions of it on on Facebook yeah yeah <laughs> purely for the fact that when I post I was like it's just it's just a bit it's a bit washed out so I've got to try it so I'm now feet trying to tweak things and that so I think the biggest thing now is I'm going for more quality over quantity right so I'm going for things that will take a lot more depth and because I like the macaw took nearly three hours and nearly 8,000 brush strokes that's kind of the level of depth I'm going into right. compared to some of the quicker ones might have been, you know, half an hour. Okay. Minimal brush sort of thing. So I was actually just going to ask you how long you usually spend on some of these. And also you said the number you're not, you're not actually counting the amount of brush. Like you're not no, sitting there no. going one, two, three. No, no. <laughs> um, it's something you have learned, but procreate actually gives you statistics. So oh. there is a setting in procreate where you can go in there. It will tell you how long you've worked on it and it, will be how long you've been active in it so you might have done like half an hour each day for a week but it'll tell you you've done two and a half hours sort of thing is whatever you've been physically doing oh and it'll tell you how many brush strokes you've used while making it i did not know that well i first of all i i only have an android tablet so i run into so many yeah, people yeah. that use procreate and i'm like make it cross platform for crying out loud i'd like to try I it i know i'd love them because they've, they've just released procreate pocket but again it's only for apple phones right. and although i've got the ipad for procreate i haven't got an apple phone and i'm just thinking oh please put that onto android because it'll just open up so much mm -hmm. opportunity to be able to do it on on the go more easily yeah um but yeah it's it's one of those things that I, i've never had an ipad before but i got the ipad specifically for doing the art yeah. and people had always said you know procreate is the part but it's a low cost. I mean, it's like it was a nine dollars ninety nine. I think it was, or fourteen dollars ninety nine. It's a one off fee, and you get all the updates. Mm -hmm. And it's it is really powerful. If I compare it to things like Illustrator, obviously Illustrator is vector art, but as as you know, you've got your layers, you've got your color swatches, you've got your your blurring and your filters and things like that. Yeah, it does things differently, but from a power point of view, it is as powerful. I would say. Yeah. And and there are comparable versions on Android to use, and I've I've found a bunch yeah, of them, yeah. and I've used those. But but yeah, it's it, I'd still like to be able to try Procreate. And a lot of the uh, like I was just before we started here, I was actually watching a YouTube video about a guy who did, was. Uh, here's another drawing prompt for you. Uh, you might actually be interested in this, something to try out or something to create yourself. Yeah. So what it was is it was a person who was basically being uh, who was going to draw um, video game uh, video game characters. But yeah. he doesn't know video games. So basically the person would just go like describe it to him and they would draw what they think they're saying the video game character is. And then they would yeah. compare it side by side after the fact. So like, you know, one of them that he did was Ban Banjo and Kazooie. 
you know, for, you know, one of those games and he's drawing it and they're describing it and it's bear and there's a bird on the back and it was kind of fun to watch. So I'm watching it, but at the same time, I'm watching it because it's screenshots of procreate and I'm like, oh, that's what that does. Okay. That's there. That's how this works. Yeah. You know, and I'm watching it going, ah, come on, cross platform this stuff. Anyway, um, <laughs> but the, the other thing I wanted to say too is, of course you went and looked at the strokes be and the, how long you've been on it and found out those settings because you're the person who was searching their own images to see if they showed up by, on Google Lens and are recognized. <laughs> so I, I, that's why although, I've although probably I'm, I'm never heard this game, before. I'm on the late to the game back because I've just realized as well, I always knew that Procreate had the, the ability to do a time-lapse video, but I thought you had to set it. I didn't realize it's set automatically. Oh, I didn't know that either. So it does it automatically, and then you just export it if you want to, and it'll give you two options. So like to so the Macaw one, if mm -hmm. I do the full length, it's 1 minute and 57 seconds because it was such a long. But then you can do a 30-second truncated version. Yeah. And it's just quite interesting to see how it goes. So I did a, a like a vampire lady one recently, and it's just hilarious watching the time lapse video because when you see the crappy sketch that I did at the beginning compared to what the end product is, it's just like, right. it's like, oh, it did go quite a way away from the starting point. <laughs> it does happen. Yes, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Yeah. And I know one of the one of the programs I use, which is Autodesk uh, Sketchbook. Sketchbook, yeah, I was going to say I've got it on my phone. Yeah, and <laughs> that one has the ability to do that too, but you do have to turn it on or you have to go, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Whereas I always thought you had to turn it on, but I didn't realize it did it by default. So yeah, I can go back crazy. to all my old drawings and export the videos. It's really weird. Wow. Okay. And isn't there another um, artist that you're following, uh, Art with Flow? I want to say yeah, I saw yeah, that yeah. you had been doing something from that. What's that group do? So, so out with Flo, um, she's the lady who did the hamburger. So somebody okay, else posted it on hamburger. Facebook. So basically, she does loads of YouTube videos that are free. So um, it'll be you can draw this. So one of the ones she did was like a spider. And what she'll do is she'll do like a thirty-minute video. I didn't like that there'll one. There'll be a couple of free. <laughs> there'll be a couple of free um, brushes that you can download. But then she's got a Patreon, so you can either just be an eagle learner, which is just supporting her. There's um. No, there's super fan, which is just a point. I think that's two dollars. Um, Eagle Learner, which is basically you'll get the current month and the previous month's tutorials, or the master student where you get everything. Um, I went to the master student because it's, it's not expensive. I mean, I think it, I think it was thirteen dollars, which when I look at it is about eight quid. So mm -hmm. I don't go anywhere at the moment. I'm not going out anywhere. There's nowhere open. So <laughs> that's a good point. Um, yeah, like it, you would pay that much to probably go out and see a band play or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I I based it on when I went to an art night. They cost about twenty five pounds, which would be about forty dollars. Okay. So in in comparison, it's not a bad price. And on the Patreon, basically. They're all open, and she's kind of con. She's um, put them into beginner, intermediate, advanced. Yes. So you get to pick and choose what you want to do. So you can either just do the one that's like the the eye one that I just done recently. She literally just posted that, so I did it straight away. Whereas I can go back quite a way back if I want to and go for one. She's got some really quite in depth ones which I'm going to try, but I think they'll take multiple days to do. Mm -hmm. So she's got a lovely black and white one that looks like it's like the sitting bull picture. Oh. But it's really realistic. Okay. So it's the portrait of Sitting Bull, but it's it's done digitally, but makes it look like a pencil sketch. And that, I think that's a four hour and 50 minute tutorial. So oh, wow. you can imagine, unless I've got no no distractions whatsoever, that's going to be a do a bit at a time and, and go back to it. Well, and that's the beauty of doing a tutorial like that because it's going to be video. You can pause and come back to it. You know, it's it's yeah. not going to a class like before. You were going to a place and it's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. And you have to finish it in an amount yeah, yeah. of time. Yeah. Okay. So I, I've, I've signed up for that and I've currently signed up for, there's a lady called Kirsty Partridge and she does actual physical drawing. So she does pencil, charcoal, watercolor and colored pencil. Um, and I was going to join her Patreon, but she had this weird deal where you paid a one-off fee and got pretty much everything she's done to date for a one-off fee. So I've, I've paid for that instead, which I can do it on my own time and the girls can, you know, so. But hers are really lengthy, so I've been doing a pencil sketch of an eye. Mm -hmm. um, and the full tutorial is like 2 hours and 50. Okay. Which is quite in-depth for just a single eye. Which <laughs> right. But it's just all the details that she goes into and whatnot, so. Okay. 
Yeah. But she's got all sorts. She's got like um, just how to do hair in sketching. She's got full on picture portraits. She's got landscapes, animals, and things like that. So but I'm in no rush to do them. I can just do them at, at my leisure. Yeah. Um, but the girls really enjoy art as well. So every so often we'll do like a we'll do like a painting and we'll all do it at the same time sort of thing. But I'd say Cara's more adventurous than Amy. Amy's okay. brilliant at digital art. She'll use her mobile phone and she'll create everything by a fingertip mm-hmm. and just zoom in and out. And But she's, she, I mean, she's only 15, but she's got it. She does all the pencil sketch. She'll do the onions. But she does it with her it. finger? Yep. Okay. that's That one's tough for me. It's it, it's not yeah. fine enough a point. You know, I, yeah. I started out doing everything just by using yep. my finger to draw. But like once I finally got a, a pen... To use, yeah. I'm like, well, oh, yeah. th- I can't go back she, to doing she that. She drives now. me by me though because I watch her do it, and because it's not a fine point, she'll make so many. She'll just finger that out, and I was like, oh, just just use a pencil. It's more. <laughs> 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 but it's how she does things, so she, yeah, she's, of course, she's enjoying it. And and um, it's a but, new generation of doing it that way. You know that she's probably yeah. not the only one. No, no, no. Um, and I mean, her Instagram reach has been amazing but i've noticed that her and her friends use instagram how we would use facebook they how don't so? just post their pictures they have little groups and they'll have chat things on there so they're chatting in there and then they'll use their stories to kind of one will ask a question and the other answer it in their story it's a weird not how i use instagram but it's how hmm? when, so when... so so Amy might post something on her Instagram and it'll be a question or, you know, which is better, X or, or Z. And then I'll notice all her friends will all have their story answering that question. Okay. All right. That's and what I was going to say. It's like, use, how are they chatting? That was, I was, yeah. I was well, trying no, to rack my brain. I'm like, direct, how are they doing that? <laughs> they're using the direct messaging as well. Cause I think you can have groups on there and okay. they talk for ages. It's just, it's really weird. It's not how I would envisage you yeah. know, Instagram working, but they've obviously, it's obviously worked for them. Right. Well, in that, I mean, Facebook originally wasn't, you couldn't do pictures or anything like that before either. It adapts to what people try to do. Twitter, when it started out, DMing and adding people was created by the users. That wasn't a yes. thing that was built into Twitter. They just started doing that. So you knew that yeah, when yeah. I post, when you wrote something, you were writing it as a response to this person. And then they made it where it was an actual like feed and, you know, embeddable and commenting and yeah, DMing yeah. all that was built just by the user base, which I yeah. find fascinating. And I love the fact that both of you and I know exactly what I'm talking about because we went through all of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, funny enough, when I was at uni, my dissertation, I used to do some, at the back of the time, they called it group wear, mm-hmm. which is effectively social media these days. Right. And my dissertation was to create a platform where you could have friends and you could share documents and you could share messaging and you could share photographs so it was effectively like a little mini truncated Facebook. Nice. Yeah. Um, but I remember I, I got a slightly lower score on my dissertation because I took away some of the functionality because the way the university worked was even though it was my program, my code, my idea, they oh. would own it if it ever, ever, ever went anywhere. So I oh. stripped back some of the functionality just in case I ever did anything which never did. Wait, you gave them the principle. freemium version? <laughs> 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 I love that. You're like, well, I'm not going to give you all my work. <laughs> no, no, it it just seems bizarre because they sprung that on everybody at the at the end. It's like, mm-hmm. hang on a minute. Yes, I might have gone to your course, but I, you know, my fees went into that course. It makes you wonder, like, because remember, Facebook originally started out as a private college thing that he gave yes, the college, yeah, yeah. and they were trying to go like, maybe we'll get one of our students to build that for us. And it, you may have been very smart in doing that, although then Facebook opened up and nobody needed it anymore uh, yeah, in yeah, their college. Yeah. Um, but back then it was other platforms like Live Journal and yep. all that. Yeah. Whatever happened to Live Journal? I was thinking about that just the other day. All of a sudden we're getting all techie. <laughs> it's still it's still going, but it's owned by the Russians. Oh, it is. Okay. It's yeah. one of those. So, I, wait, did does is that the uh rant not uh, Yandex or something like that? Is that what that is? Or no, that's their it search might engine. Have been a- they could have um so basically Brad Fitzpatrick was the person who created Live Journal because I was such an early user. Mm-hmm. I was an early adopter because I gave I have got a permanent account on there because we donated a hundred dollars to help him towards running the costs. So, oh wow. Um, I think I was user three thousand seven hundred and thirteenth and it's got millions now, which is quite Yeah. And then he eventually sold it to six apart. Okay. Yep. Which is a tech startup and then they sold it to the Russians. 
Yeah. Because um, Six so, Apart was that that wasn't Kevin Rose's company, was it? Not sure. I don't but remember. I know when Six Apart when it was sold to Six Apart, Brad eventually worked for Six Apart, but then obviously I think he didn't like yeah. all the changes that were happening, so he just kind of severed all ties and uh, but as far as where it's still going, um it's I don't think it's as active. I mean mm-hmm. I used to use it for years. I'll go on there sporadically and I'll see that nobody I know is posting. So it's, but I think everybody just emigrated off to Facebook and Twitter. Oh, and, of course. Yes, yeah, so I've still got all the friends groups that I used to have on there. And I still got, you know, contacts from different groups that we're in, but we're all now on Facebook and things like that. So yeah, I think it's just how things change. Absolutely. And and you are using these to post your stuff. I mean, this is what you're, the, the drawings that you're doing, you share them very often. You're very public yeah. and open about doing that. And I think that's really yeah. cool. Do you have any other plans for stuff that you're making? Or is this really just kind of, I mean, you said you do it to unwind. Is that really all it is? I do it. I do it to unwind. But I think if I can learn the graphic design stuff to a certain level, I may consider, you know, going on some freelance sites and then potentially look at possibly checking out different career options but when it comes to the drawing I feel like what I might try and do is when I get to a certain level I might start creating some assets and look at it for some passive income so maybe create some you know animal sections or you know and then put them on sites for people to download and things like that yeah um and then you know I've I've bought loads of brushes lately that um flow and other people have done I'm like that's a huge industry. Everybody's got, oh, here's my brushes that I use. So that's something else to look at as you get further along the line. That's very true. Yeah. And yeah. making brush, and the reason is, is because sure, you can make your own brush, but man, you you know, you just got to spend a lot of time doing it. And then you're like, this is time I could have spent actually drawing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you yeah. actually have the know-how to just sit and go, I am going to make brushes and give them or sell them to people, then you know that that's yeah. what you're working on. Huh. I mean, I, I, I use a website called Hungry JPEG, which is all like creative assets. So, and every so often oh. there'll be um, some have created a font or they'll have created a uh, a pack for vector art. So it'll be like, it might be a theme. So it could be um, tutti frutti and it's got all different watercolor fruit and things like that. Yeah. But that's created by artists that will be selling it on a certain site and then they do it as part of a giveaway. So that's the kind of thing that I could possibly feed into if I find, you know, because. You know, I've done loads of um, creatures and things like that, but if you do them as a cohesive set mm-hmm. that are all, you know, similar size, similar colouring sort of thing, then you can put them in a pack and and it may come in useful for somebody who's very creative but maybe not do the drawing but want to use it inside one of their creative outlets. So people are making cards and posters and things like that. So there's loads of creative marketing, there's all sorts. Mm-hmm. So it's building up that whole repertoire and then putting collections together and giving it a go yeah What's one the worst of that can happen? nobody buys it <laughs> <laughs> right and that, that's the other thing too it, it's it's also uh trying to market yourself and trying to put yeah, it yeah. out there like what well and you also do that that's actually a something i want to know about like you and your husband do not only a podcast but a radio show and then with the um with this stuff that we're talking about like how do you promote what you're doing? And if you were to do that, like what have you learned from promoting your podcast and your radio show? Like what are your methods for getting the word out there? Yeah. So mostly it's social media. So we've got um, the Facebook and Twitter. One thing I've been saying to Dave is I'm currently doing some rebranding for the podcast to try and freshen up some of the things. Once we've got that in place, I want to start branching out into Instagram because I've noticed now that a lot of artists have get like uh, musical artists are now having Instagram accounts. Yeah. So it's just another place to be able to tag them. So we we did our best of shows lately because every year we do best of shows. So there's listeners' choice, Dave's best of the year and my best of the year. And that often feeds traffic because you're letting the artist know ahead of the time that they're in the best of show. Then they're sending it to their fan base and then you get people coming that way. Yeah. Um, But, you know, I wouldn't say that the podcast has ever been, you know, hugely, insanely popular, but (laughs) we've had the same steady fan base that have become very good friends for many years that are very active in that and we've always done it from enjoyment we've never done the podcasting to make money right um and i know a lot of people are you know some people are using podcasts now as a as a money thing but for us it's still loving the enjoyment and because we we're supporting the you know independent artists for us that's what it's all about right. which is why when 
the local radio show was saying, you know, it's a community of internet radio show, and they were like, we want people for ideas, and we're like, it'd be good to revisit some of the artists that we've not been able to play for ages because we've played all their material on the podcast. Yeah. But dedicate shows to them. So on Uncharted, we choose an artist each week, and we'll do between six and eight of their tracks, depending on how many we can fit in an hour. And one half of the show is dedicated for artist A, and one half is dedicated for artist B. Mm-hmm. And it's all about them. So, and it's always about you know, this is only six tracks of whatever they've got. Here's where to find them to find out more. Yeah. No, and so, and I've recently been on that, or at least my band has. And yeah, yeah. The, the only thing that was confusing to me because I thought it was like a podcast or something, and I was going to promote it. And I'm like, wait, how do I get this? And it was a live, it was a live radio show, and I'm just like, oh shoot, I yeah, was not well, prepared for this. <laughs> I'll um, they, they do go on Mixcloud afterwards, but I'll get oh, they do. To send you a link. Yes, yes. So um, it'll we record it, it then goes out live. So this week's is out now, <laughs> but we recorded it earlier. And then it goes on Mixcloud, so I'll find you the Mixcloud link, and you'll oh, still, be great. still be on there for you. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing like going, uh, here's my stuff. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um, it, yes. It's been really good, because we've got, we've got some good friendships now with some of the artists that we've played yeah. over the years. And, you know, my best of show, there's a band called Mercury and the Architects, and they've appeared on a lot of my best of shows. But now, you know, they'll get a new art, a new track. Oh, I'll just send it over to you so you can play it. So Yes. And it's really good to see them grow because as a band, they've gone from... The, you can see the, how their musical styles have changed, but just their confidence and, you know, their music production and the videos and things like that. And I think that's quite exciting because they're a young band and it's quite cool to see such big improvements over a short period of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it's so funny too. Well, I mean, first of all, that's how we know each other, or that's how yeah, I know yeah. you and Dave is through this podcasting community. We we were in the same sort of like music circles. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, there there are different, and we have the same background of of artists that we know. Like, uh, do you remember when um, uh, Bad Panda Records in Italy? was uh he had he basically discovered um great now i'm gonna forget the name it's something the elephant um shoot they they ended up becoming (laughs) becoming like major label stars and he's the one that helped them because when we had talked to him on the podcast that i did the music one that i did he was like i have this one band and he's like i'm just gonna try and promote the heck out of them and get them known and found and discovered and he did like he and he was militant like he was just posting every five seconds about this band on Twitter on Facebook like he just kept going and they're doing this and here's their song here's their song yeah. again here's and eventually they got picked up and uh, I really wish I could remember the name it's Dumbo no Dumbo gets mad that's what it was right that's that was the band oh, yeah. it's not the elephant it was Dumbo gets mad over here we've done like we for for years about six years in a row we did pod um, pod crawls in London mm. so. All the podcasters over here we would meet up in London for a for a it was a pod crawl which would basically go from pub to pub and chat along the way. Right. Um. But a couple of years, I mean, one year we had Rodrigo came from Brazil because he he just decided to try make his holiday time it well so he could come and meet us. Okay. And Irk came from Australia. Huh. Um. And Irk from Australia, we actually put him up for a couple of nights here. Wow. Because he he he'd come over to Europe and whatnot, and we just said, well, stay with us for a couple of nights because. From his point of view, it'd just be a change from the hotels for a couple of nights. So, right. And it was bizarre because at that point, we'd known him for about four or five years, but hadn't met him in person. <laughs> <laughs> we also knew his mum as well because his mum used to do a podcast. Um, oh, really? And the last, then the last few years, we've done um, pod crawls in Glasgow. Um, uh-huh. And then obviously, COVID's hit, but. Right. Um, big difference between Glasgow and London for drinking quantities and i'm not a, i'm not a big drinker so I'm, I, I'm always the one that's holding the kitty for the money because <laughs> everybody else has had too much by the end of it oh man and so what uh one one last thing i wanted to ask is um what kind of uh things do you have coming up what things are you planning in the future what are some things you'd like to mention that like you're looking forward to doing or things that you're going to be creating in the near future yeah so obviously we'll still be doing the podcast. I don't think we'll ever finish doing that unless we run out of artists, but I don't think that's going to happen. No. Um, art-wise, there's loads of the tutorials I haven't done yet, and then I've got a few ideas that I want to do, some more in-depth pieces. So today I've done a little um, dog portrait for a friend. 
I've never done a dog portrait, but I started it last night and I was like, that's not turned out too badly. So I sent it to him. She's like, oh, I like that. So, okay. so I think for me, it's just more taking things to the next level and doing more in depth pieces, but using the techniques that I've already learned, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then once I catch on to something, so like to the macaw, I've now got so many different pictures of birds and the close for the faces. So I'll do like a series of that just to get used to doing it. Um, I, I, I've done a few little realism food pieces in the past, but I feel like I can take them to the next level now with some of these new brushes and techniques. Okay. So, um, you know, I was out with the girls today for a walk and there was, um, I can't remember if it was maybe McDonald's was advertising a chicken burger. I, I don't eat meat by the way, but I took a photo of him and I was like, why are you taking a photo of that? Sort of, because it'd be a good one to draw. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think that's what's going to be my life now. It's like, oh, I'll give that a go. Oh, this is a nice salad. Let's see if I can take a photo of it to try and draw it. I like it. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You're just going to have, yeah. you'll just, looking through your uh, photo feed, it's just going to be a bunch of random stuff where it's like, people. if people see it, they'll be like, you take pictures of weird things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously, I've still got the graphic design stuff to do. Um, I Basically, the courses I got, it kind of starts off with the, the basics and then it goes into more in depth. So I'll keep moving through those. Um, I also got some geeky courses, so I've got like a web developer boot camp and things like that because I've done web programming in the past, but I'm a bit rusty. So I just feel like given this year how weird it's been and how uncertain things have been, it doesn't hurt to, you know, rebuild some skill sets and open up your... Because ultimately I, I would love to be in a position where my day job is the art and the creativity. Mm hmm so it's just building up big enough portfolio. So at the moment for the graphic design, I'm doing some logos and book covers and branding products for people, which I've approached them and offered it for free so that I've got some of my portfolio. And then I can start looking at things to see what's out there. Yeah. And and I'm sure you'll find it too. And let me tell you from experience, the knowing how to program and knowing how to use Illustrator and Photoshop is yeah. kind of a very rarely found thing and I, th- I think for me though it's just taking my art to the next level which yeah. i've already started i'm already seeing the improvements and I, I guess i'm a bit like a sponge at the moment the minute i i've done a tutorial and i've learned something i'm like that would really work if i did it in this sort of piece so exactly and i think that's how you learn and to me i always said this to my girls even if something turns out rubbish never delete it mm-hmm. because you learn from how it turned out rubbish if that makes sense it does um, and as far as I'm concerned, as long as any time I'm doing art, I've got a smile on my face, it's worth it. It's my enjoyment, and as long as it doesn't become a chore where I'm like, oh, I've got to do it, then it's something wrong. But I have right. never had a day yet where I've been, oh, I've got to do some art. I've always been, when can I get my art sorted? <laughs> when can I do it? And if people wanted to connect with you or check out your stuff, where would you suggest that they go? So the best place at the moment is Instagram as the Instamoo mm-hmm. um, or WDCD UK on Instagram. Um, I have got a couple of websites lined up, but I'll get to them when I've done. So I have got carolinelee.co.uk. Oh, nice. Work. I've got um, WDCD.uk, which is quite a nice snappy um, one. I've got iwrote.uk. I've got so many domain names, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I do that. You'll get an idea and it's like, well, I don't know if I'm going to build it yet, but I'm going to buy the domain just in case. I've got tons yeah, of those. <laughs> well, Amy and Cara have had their name as a domain since they were little. Oh, wow. I've not done anything with them, but and we, we're just k- kicking ourselves because we can't get Alex in the same format. Oh. So, but I've said to the girls, you'll like this because when you're a bit older and you're applying for jobs, having your own domain name rather than Hotmail, or, it will set you out against the people so yep. we'll get them putting something up on there <laughs> that's awesome thank you so much for joining me today i'm so glad that i got the chance to talk with you about this yeah, yeah.